All right, so this video is not a review of the F3 because everybody and his brother has already done a review of the F3. Instead, I'm going to complain about it. And I want you to tell me if I'm full of it or not. Uh, is this legitimate or am I just griping about nothing? So here's my complaint. Well, first of all, for some background, the F3, electronic camera, electronic shutter. Um, and one of the primary advantages of an electronic shutter is that you can get intermediate speeds. That is, if I select the shutter speed manually, then I can select from between 2,000 uh, down to, what's this, uh, 8 seconds, uh, but in only one-stop increments. If I want an intermediate speed, I have to put it on automatic. That is, this, this shutter, like most electronic shutters, will continuously adjust the shutter speed um, without, well, without increments, it's seamlessly, steplessly um, adjust the shutter speed. So you get an intermediate shutter speed uh, for more accurate uh, readings. So that's the big advantage of electronic shutters. Well, in order to take advantage of that, a couple of things have to happen. Either your light meter is properly reading the scene, um, which it may be. Now in the F3, you've got a, um, uh, you have a variation of Nikon's traditional 60-40 center split um, or center weighted um, uh, metering pattern. You've got uh, a more heavily weighted metering pattern with 80% of the sensitivity inside the 12 millimeter circle, which you can see in the viewfinder. So it's not, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a spot meter, but it's getting closer to spot meter than an average metering. Um, you're, you're, you've basically got almost all of your sensitivity inside that circle. Well, what if your composition is such that the, um, uh, the item that you want to reflect your midtones is not inside that circle? Well, in that case, you need to, um, you need to, re you need to meter that part of the scene which you want to, re to reflect as a midtone. Now, maybe you're metering for the shadows, maybe for the highlights, but if you put your meter over that, that particular thing, that meter is telling your camera, this is 18% gray. That's what it's calibrated to do. Um, and you may want, again, you may want a meter for the highlights or the shadows or the midtones, depends on what you're trying to do. And the, the part of the scene that you're metering may wind up in the upper left-hand corner of your frame or it may wind up dead center, you don't know. But in case it's not dead center, you need the ability to meter that part of the composition and then recompose. So in order to do that, you're going to set the camera either on manual exposure so that you meter the part of the scene that, that uh, you want and then you adjust the exposure accordingly. Or you need to, and this is bet for electronic camera, you really need this option because the only way to take advantage of intermediate shutter speeds in this situation is to hit the, uh, the exposure hold button. And that's my gripe. That's my complaint about the F3 is the placement of the exposure hold button, which is there, right there. It's that thing right there. Uh, that's your depth of field preview. This is your exposure hold. I wish it was the other way around. So... In order to take advantage of the exposure hold function on the F3, you've got to depress this button while simultaneously depressing the shutter release. Now you notice these two buttons are kind of far apart. Um, on most cameras nowadays, the exposure hold function is on the upper right hand part of the back of the camera, you've got a button right about there. And in fact, on the Nikon FM3A, which was released in what, 2001, I think, um, there is an exposure hold button right there, indicating that not, by that time Nikon understood that that's, where, that's what the convention was. But at the time the FM was released in 1980, uh, automatic exposure was still kind of a, a bit of a novelty, and there was no established convention on where to put the exposure hold function. So um, on the early auto exposure cameras, it varied, um, unless you were Minolta, in which case you just didn't have one at all. But I digress. Um, so... In order to hit the exposure, to use the exposure hold function on my F3, I've got to hold my camera such that I'm, I'm ready to, I, I can trip the shutter with, with one finger, typically my index finger. And now I've got to hold down this thing. Well, it's a little bit of a stretch. I can't, I can't, I mean, to hold it with my middle finger, it is, that's just really uncomfortable. Uh, it's too far apart. So that means I've got to depress it with my ring finger. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have a whole lot of strength and dexterity in my ring finger. And to grip the camera in this fashion is a bit challenging. Um, again, maybe I'm just particularly uncoordinated. Maybe I have oddly deformed coordination in my hands or they're just not put together right. I, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm the freak and not the camera. Uh, but for me, it's really tough to hold down the, um, uh, the exposure hold function with this finger while simultaneously pressing the shutter release. It's not impossible, 
it's just awkward and uncomfortable. And it's, it's even worse in portrait orientation. If I'm trying to hold this thing in portrait orientation, that's, that's just, it's hard to show here on the video because of the way the camera's set up. But, um, uh, but I find that particularly difficult. So that's my main number one gripe about the Nikon F3 is that one of the main advantages of having an electronic shutter is the ability to utilize intermediate shutter speeds. And on a camera with a metering system as heavily weighted as this one, that means you've got to be able to meter that part of the scene uh, which you want to re be reflected as a mid-tone in your, in your composition and then recompose um, while holding down the, um, um, the uh, while, while locking the exposure. And I find that a little bit awkward on the F3. In fact, well, I find it to be very awkward. In fact, I rarely use the exposure hold function on this camera and I find myself shooting it um, manually um, more often than I should have to. After all, if I'm just going to recompose manually and, and, and shoot, then what, what, what do I need this thing for? I mean, why not just use my FM or my FM2? Um, so that's my complaint. Uh, tell me what you think. Leave a comment. Uh, what's your experience? Uh, is, uh, which, which is deformed, me or the camera? <laughs> either is possible. In fact, either is probably equally likely. Um, all right, so second question. I need y'all's help with something. So this is my beautiful, pristine condition Nikon F3, or at least it was until a few days ago, when this fell off. Um, this is the rubber strip that goes around the, uh, the um, shutter speed selector dial right here. So this thing just, um, it just flat out fell off. I don't know, I don't know what that, why, maybe, I, mean, I, I don't know, I'm not going to speculate. It just did. Um, so it's supposed to go around here. So what I was thinking was uh, to... Uh, like put some, uh, you know, put some contact cement, like a tiny little bit of contact cement, a few dribs and drabs, maybe with a toothpick um, along, the, along the, the length of it, and then just uh, stick it back on here and hold it for a minute in place and then hope that it dries and, um, and that'll fix it. But I'm not exactly an arts and crafts kind of person, so I don't really know if that's the right way to do that. Would I be causing more damage? Am I, you know, is there a reason not to use contact cement? Um, is there some other thing I should use? Uh, is there some other solution that I should be trying? What do you guys think? Uh, what's the best way to fix this? I'd really like some opinions because uh, I could use some help. I, I don't want to do anything that's going to um, uh, harm the, uh, the value of or the functionality of, of the camera, obviously. Um, okay, so leave me your thoughts and opinions, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Hope everybody's doing well and um, enjoying your time on lockdown. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, let's, let's, let's hope we get through this thing sooner rather than later. Uh, we've seen some good news in the, in the news lately, and um, I'm hopeful. I'm really, really hopeful that my, that my uh, doom and gloom predictions of economic disaster turn out to be absolutely false, and uh, I, I'm, I've never been, been more hopeful of being wrong in my life. So, um, be well, be safe. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and check out the links below. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.